Hi guys, welcome to my guide for the S Plus Hardcore run of Claire's B scenario in Resident Evil 2 Remake. A couple of things before we get started. Some of the tips and tricks and paths that I've used in this run are inspired by or lifted directly from Darkness or Optinoob, both of whom have made guides for various playthroughs of this game. Go check out their respective YouTube channels, links in the description, and big thanks to them. This route is much my own creation though, so I thought I would share it with anyone who's interested. Keep in mind, I'm not a speedrunner, and I'm not claiming that this is the fastest way to beat this scenario. Not by a long shot. Before we start, please play all four variations of the campaign in this game going in blind. As I always say, you can only ever experience something for the first time once, so please enjoy going in blind with no idea what to expect before you attempt this S plus hardcore run. The requirements for getting the S plus rating on this run are as follows. Complete the game in under two hours, saving the game a maximum of three times. I'll be talking a lot, especially in the beginning, since there's a lot to say. Also, when you see this faux VHS effect, you're seeing footage from a different run that presents an alternate scenario or outcome, so I can cover all my bases. There will also be some 30 and 60 frames per second footage for a few boss fights. This will be apparent when it comes to it. The final time for the run you're about to see is 1 hour, 20 minutes and 7 seconds, leaving you plenty of time to spare. Alright, let's get into it. In the B scenario, whether you play as Leon or Claire, you will start in this alternate area, as you should know since you naturally played the B scenarios casually before watching this video. You can aim your gun in a certain rhythm to speed up your movement when going up or down stairs. There's a red and a blue herb that you can pick up in this starting area. Feel free to grab them, although usually I end this run with a lot of excess healing items, so you might not need them. Grab the bolt cutters from the wheelbarrow, and hold your right movement key and your sprint key coming out of the cutscene, immediately darting to your right to avoid these zombies. The zombie in the police uniform may or may not follow you down the steps. It seems to be kind of random. Use the bolt cutters to enter this room and loot everything in here. Put your quick draw army revolver and any herbs in the stash. On your way out, kneecap the cop zombie to pass by him if he followed you. It might take up to three shots to stun him. Throw your grenade into the rest of the group when you're close. Don't worry about getting grabbed, the grenade will set you free. Open the gate with the key, take the ammo on the barrel and discard the key. Run into the east wing of the RPD and follow the hallway. A zombie comes through the window on your left. Let's call him Rob. We'll deal with him in a moment, but first, Grab the first aid spray in the bathroom. Then get the ammo in this conference room. Continue down the hallway and grab the ammo and wooden boards from this small room. By this time, our friend should have caught up to us. Feel free to spend up to two bullets shooting him in the face if you have any left as you sometimes get a lucky critical hit, which will simplify the next task a bit. As you can see, I had no such luck here, so I'm gonna get in the corner here and wait for him to come around. Most of the time, he will take a tight line towards you, allowing you to run around him on the right. But this time, he stumbles out to the right, so I run past him on the left. The goal here is to leave Rob at this specific end of the hallway. Run back towards the east office and cut the chain with your bolt cutters. Take note of where the cop zombie is. He's usually up against the blocked double doors, but he might be in the office if you don't see him. Pick up the flash grenade and the ammo next to the window, board the window, and bait the zombie around this little table so you can loot the round handle and the white gunpowder in the office. Remove the chair blocking the doors. Our friend Rob should burst into the room shortly. If you killed him in the hallway, don't bother unblocking the doors. 
Pick up the gunpowder from this desk and combine the powders to make acid rounds. Run back out the way you came in and head towards the break room. Run past poor Elliot on the right and grab the combat knife from the wall. Stash everything except for the bolt cutters, the round handle, and your ammo. Loot everything in the break room, as well as the two flame rounds outside on the shelf, and stash it all, except for the fuse. Remember to exchange your SLS revolver for the quick draw army in your stash. Leave the break room with your gun, ammo, bolt cutters, round handle, and the fuse. Run past Elliot when he turns his back, or what's left of it. The hallway should be clear as all the zombies are in the east office. Put the fuse in the fuse box and get ready to clear the main hall. There's a guy close here. Take care of him. The zombies in the east office will come bursting out the double doors and come after you. But they can't follow you into the main hall. Grab this first aid spray at your convenience and put Uncle Marvin out of his misery. There's a zombie up the stairs as well. Feel free to take her out, or leave her for later like I did. Marvin is surely still alive after this, but I got places to go and things to do, so we'll deal with him later. What was that? Grab the green herb and the ammo on your way to the west wing hallway. Make sure to walk through here, as there's a liquor on the ceiling around this corner. You can run once you get past this plank on the right, leaning against the wall, without the liquor hearing you. Take the ammo on your left, use the bolt cutters on this door, and discard the bolt cutters. Take the electronic gadget, the green herb, and the flashbang, and exit through this door. Put down Vending Machine Man, and this dude over here, and take the ammo on the body behind you. Feel free to stick around making sure they're dead before you proceed into the West Office. Grab the ammo in the locker, and kill this dude. He'll be problematic later if you don't. The combination to this safe is 9, 15, 7. Run down this hallway and kill this zombie who comes through the window. Stay back a little bit to avoid triggering the two zombies up the stairs. One of them typically falls over the railing. Feel free to stay at the bottom of the stairs for your own safety until you've dealt with them all. You got time. Don't forget the ammo in this corner. On the second floor, take the red herb in the back and get into the locker room, where you can take the jewelry box and use the round handle. Run back down towards the dark room, killing any stragglers along the way. Get
Get the green herb outside the dark room. The red herb in the back. And stash everything but your revolver in the ammo. Run all the way up to the third floor this time and take this ammo. A Zombo comes shambling out from there. Stay back and wait for him to get close. Bust a cap in his cap and run past him while he's stunned. Unlock this locker with the code DCM. Take the SMG ammo inside and the spade key on this desk. Run through the hallway into the west storage room. If you don't stick around here for too long, the zombie hanging from the ceiling next to the shelf by the doorway won't activate, so to say, meaning he won't fall down and come alive later when we get the maiden medallion. I also try to look into the floor a little bit as I pass through, but I'm honestly not sure if that has anything to do with it. Either way, that zombie is very rarely a problem. Kill the zombo who's roaming around the library, and take the combat knife on the cop's body. Take care not to get too close to the zombie napping next to the spade door, or the one having a feast next to the shelves, and don't climb the ladder. Move these two shelves and grab the ammo. Take the same route back, through this door, and get the unicorn medallion with the solution Two children, scales, and this worm-looking thing with a beak or whatever that's supposed to be. Run back out and grab the red book on the table. And carefully exit through this spade door, keeping to the right so we don't wake up the napping zombie. Turn right as you come out for some more ammo. Get the lion medallion with the solution, crown, torch, and bird. Take out any zombies in your way, if you haven't already, and head to the waiting room. Take the green herb and walk to the spade door. There are two zombies out in this hallway, but you can usually sneak past them. Sometimes you can't. If this guy is close enough to the corner to spot you, just keep walking to the art room. When you walk through this door, he will likely lose interest and fuck off back to where he came from. Get the key card and the scepter, continuing to walk while you're in here. The moment you get the scepter, a surprise liquor shows up behind you. Walk around him on your right. Don't worry, he won't get you. You might have noticed that I'm running past a lot of zombies who aren't dead yet. It's a little risky and I don't recommend you do that. The reason why I do it is because the quick draw army revolver takes so long to reload. And I like to do the reloading while I'm heading to my next destination. Head back down the stairs and deposit the medallions. Make your way through the west office, taking the long way around the desk. Go to the safety deposit room and enter the code 109 for some extra ammo.
Get the grenade launcher and some flame rounds with the keycard and head to the dark room. Put the jewelry box, revolver and ammo, the scepter and the electronic gadget in your inventory. Examine the scepter to get the red jewel and combine it with the jewelry box to get the stars badge. Examine the stars badge to turn it into a USB dongle. Now head up to the locker rooms on the second floor and get the flame rounds from these lockers using the combination cap to unlock the padlock. Take the flame rounds on this couch and head into the star's office and loot everything in sight. Unlock the weapons locker with the USB dongle and get the SMG. Bring the USB dongle with you and don't forget the 9 volt battery in Wesker's office that you combine with the electronic gadget to get the detonator. Now say hello to Mr. X and preemptively flashbang him to run past. He might flail his arms and hit you while he's blind. Head through this room, up the library stairs and into the west storage room. Take the ammo on this shelf, set the detonator, and run out the door and back in. This way the shelf won't fall over. Get the maiden medallion with the solution, ram, harp, and bird. Ignore the zombie noises and get ready to kite Mr. X and run back out through the door. There he is. Sometimes he'll be coming from the other end of the room and you can just run straight out without kiting him around. Run back down the stairs and out the spade door. Stick to the right to respect the napping zombie's sleepy time. Run back down the stairs and deposit the maiden medallion. Alright, off to fight the G1 Birkin boss. Loot the flame rounds in this room and make your first save here using the conveniently placed ink ribbon. Now there are different ways you can fight this boss depending on your frame rate. I'm playing at a locked 120 frames per second on PC which affects how many hits the knife does per swipe. For 120 frames per second and above, bring two combat knives, the star's badge, and your revolver and ammo. I will show you how to fight this boss at 30 and 60 frames per second as well in a moment. Remember to grab the grenade at the bottom of the staircase and the suppressor for the SMG before you proceed.
The strategy goes as follows. As soon as the fight begins, run up to Birkin and knife the shit out of him. I like to stand in front of him on the left so I can hit his Churitho arm and his body at the same time for extra damage. Eventually, he will try to grab you. Just use your now scuffed combat knife to get him off of you and immediately run up to him and knife him some more with your second combat knife. You should be able to defeat him before he can attack you again, so just keep at it. And that's the fight at 120 frames per second. Now for the 30 and 60 frames per second versions of this fight. I'll be using the same strategy for both and the same loadout seen in the middle of the screen now. I'm going to put the suppressor on the SMG as well, as we'll use it for the fight. First, we're going to start off the same way as before, knifing the shit out of him while he's goofing around. Then, when he recovers, shoot him with an acid round from the grenade launcher to stun him momentarily, and shoot the eye on his churitho arm with the SMG. You should be able to put him on his knees and knife him some more. If he grabs you, you can tank the hit. It might be worth holding onto the knife, but it's up to you. Use the same strategy until you're out of acid rounds, and then use flame rounds to finish him off if you need. And there you go. Loot the area and climb the ladder to proceed. At the stash, leave everything but your revolver and ammo. Worked with my mom, but he's gone. Wow, both of my parents are gone. It's just me and my mom. Over there! It's closed. After saying goodbye to Sherry, head right through this door over here and take a right turn. Walk into this room. Grab the white powder on your right before walking around these liquors. Head into the morgue and grab a flashbang from over here. and get the diamond key from over here. 
Now as soon as you pull out this drawer, the zombie inside and the zombie by the door will immediately spring to life. Try to grab the key and get out as fast as possible. The zombie by the door won't grab you if you're quick enough. Walk back into the room with the liquors. Get the liquors attention and then walk back out the door. This will cause him to move out of the way. You want both of them sitting on the wall, one staring up the ass of the other, just like that. Walk past him on the left and do not run out of this room. Because right around the corner, out in this hallway, there's a surprise liquor on the ceiling. Walk under him and back to the parking garage. Run through this doorway and use the diamond key to get in this room. Pull the lever to activate the elevator to Chief Iron's office and loot the gunpowder, grenade launcher stock, and blue herb before proceeding. Take the green herb on the way, loot the SMG ammo on the desk, and stash everything except the grenade launcher with our newly acquired stock. Run to this back room and pick up this relief. Examine the relief to get the heart key and unlock the door to the office. Run upstairs and get the flashbang and the ammo in these lockers. Now run into this room, grab the flame rounds on the left and barbecue this guy. Be careful and keep your distance as it's pretty tight in here. Unlock the door and loot everything in both rooms. There's another zombie at the far end of the room. Head back to Chief Iron's office and stash everything but the revolver the ammo, the large gear, the heart key, and the electronic part. Now head upstairs and out this door and then descend the ladder. Run down the stairs in the back and turn the lever over here. Bust a cap in this Zombo's cap, go back up the stairs, put out the helicopter fire, and grab the ammo on the bench. Head inside and take the red herb. Now say hello to Mr. X. Look him dead in the eye for a few seconds just to make sure he follows you back out the door. Bait out an attack from him as you run past him to put some extra distance between you.
grab this herb in the hallway and run through the waiting room, out into the main hall, down the stairs and through the west office. I shoot a random shot here to manipulate Mr. X's pathing to our benefit. A trick I picked up from watching speedruns of this game. Make sure to walk out into the hallway as there's a liquor waiting for you now. Make your way through this door and unlock the door with the heart key. Inside, take the tool and the grenade. This will trigger Mr. X to come after you, so wait for him at the back. Lead him around the rosy without baiting an attack this time, and try to walk back out into the hallway. Right past the liquor where we came from. Run back out the west office and up the stairs to the library. Rudely interrupt the napping zombie and use the tool to lower the shelf and then move all three shelves to the left. Take the ladder upstairs and use your newfangled pathway to access the upper level of the main hall. Run down the catwalk and take care to bust a cap in this Zombo's cap behind the pillar before turning right to enter the clock tower room. Put the large gear into this contraption to lower a staircase. Don't forget to take the large gear back into your inventory when you're done and then head up the stairs. Take the small gear from this contraption and replace it with the large gear. Head downstairs and put the small gear into this contraption, releasing the electronic part next to the bell. That worked. Grab the electronic part on your way out. The zombie we kneecapped to get in here should be down the catwalk on the left. We need Mr. X to go the same way, so if he's in your way, go back into the clock tower room until you hear him walking past the door and down the catwalk we came from. In this playthrough, Mr. X was still catching up, so I went for it. Sometimes this Zombo is standing in the corner and you can just run straight past him. Other times, like here, you might want to bust a cap in his cap to run past. Style on Mr. X by operating a sliding lock, something he has a bit of trouble with. And run down the stairs to Chief Iron's office. Head into the back room to solve the puzzle with your newly acquired electronic parts. I've superimposed the correct solution on the screen here. There's a trophy for solving this puzzle in just 10 moves. Grab the keycard inside to trigger Sherry's section. What? 
turn around and grab the creepiest looking AI generated realistic minion you've ever seen and immediately tear open its back to get this puzzle piece. Solve the puzzle by inserting the block, moving the first block to the third position and rotating each piece as needed. The rotational position of each block is random every time, but their position in the sequence stays the same. The rest of Sherry's run is on rails and you should know what to do, so I'll leave it to play out and if you'd like, skip to the timestamp below to get back to Claire. What is this? Takes me to find you, the worse it's gonna be. chance show yourself now
Good to see you again, Claire. As you get the keycard for the parking garage, go back to Chief Iron's office and take the following loadout. Revolver, ammo, keycard, and a flashbang. If you're running low on ammo, feel free to bring the SMG and some ammo for that as well. Then head back down the elevator in the back and go to the parking garage. Use the key card to open the gate and say hello to Mr. X. You again? Kite him around this cruiser without baiting an attack and run out the gate. Run across the street and up to this gate to have these two zombos bust through it. Then kite Mr. Axe around this car and come back through the now clear gate. Run along the catwalk, down the stairs, and past this zombie. There's a dog behind the fence that will despawn on its own. Take care of the other dogs though. Continue into the court and 420 MLG Pro No Scope collapse these two dogs through the fence. Okay, so that didn't actually happen on this run. But I'd be remiss if I didn't share my elite skills with you guys. Grab the supplies on the bench and take out the last dog before exiting the court. Grab the blue herb over here, head into the bus, and grab the grenade before kneecapping this zombie and running past. Try your best to dodge the dog on the other side. It can be just about anywhere, so just do your best and take it out quick. Hang on, Sherry. Get to the orphanage no! and go on through the hallway. I have the Say hello to Jose in the back with a big piece of chorizo in his eye. Adios, Jose. Fue un honor conocerte. Briefly say hello to Sherry and immediately leave her behind to break the game dialogue in the next section. Take the magnum ammo in this room and the SMG ammo back here. Don't stop! 
If you forgot to bring a flashbang, you can take one from the stash now. If you didn't bring the SMG along, you will have enough inventory space before we hit the next stash momentarily. Otherwise, clear your inventory at the stash. And don't forget that flashbang. Get into the sewers. Take the white gunpowder on the left. Continue on past the cable car and up the ladder. Now as you run into this room, beeline for the flame rounds on this dude over here. And immediately turn around and throw the flashbang. This will buy you enough time to unlock this locker with the combination SZF and get some SMG ammo before you drop down into this safe room. You could save the game here, but I prefer to save after the next bit. Continue with your revolver, ammo, and a grenade. You can also bring the SMG if you're low on ammo. Take the red herb and the T-handle from near the cable car. And then go unlock this safe with the combination 2, 12, 8. It's written on the side of the safe as well. Head through this door and walk down these stairs. Chuck a nade roughly around here to quickly clear these three zombies out. They may need additional bullets to be put down for good. Open this gate with the T handle. and come back for the green herb over here. Pull this handle to open the grate and go reimburse the nade you just spent. Then head through the now open grate past this gangster, keeping left to avoid getting hit Grab the blue herb here and unlock the gate with the T-handle. Take the magnum ammo on the barrel and ride the lift upstairs. Take the revolver ammo on your right and prepare to go fast. Unlock the door Take a step back and quickly run out and grab the rook piece from here. Run back in around the table and if you were fast enough, the zombos won't get you. Take the lift back down. Now we need to get past this gangster again. Sometimes he will leave and go hang out on the right further down the sewers. But most of the time he's waiting for you when you come back down the lift. Stand on the platform until he dives into the water then run past him. If you're too slow, he will come back out of the water and knock you back a bit. In that case, just get back on the platform and try again. Run back to the safe room and stash everything but your revolver, ammo, a stack of at least two grenades, and the SMG. You can bring any used knives you have to potentially save on the grenades, but we will need five free inventory slots by the time we get to where we need to go. 
So keep that in mind. It's time to go get the rest of the chess pieces in the spark shot. But first, I recommend saving your progress. Run down the stairs and through the gate we opened earlier. Descend the ladder and grab the green herb over here. Kill this zombie, who will otherwise cause problems later. Oh, Jesus. Continue on and get in this corner. Alright, 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 guys. We need to talk about these gangsters, alright? I drew a map. It's the gangster map. Numero uno, okay? Stop grabbing me. So, you're here. This is gangster number one. He's not a problem, right? You just shoot him, he comes out of the water, you run past him on the left. No big, no big deal, right? No problem, it's fine. Then you got gangster number three up here, he comes out of a pipe like Super Mario Brothers style, you know what I'm saying? He's not a problem, right? You just hug the left, run right past him, okay? Then you got Zombomans, you just, you just shoot Zombomans until he's like stunned, you know, so you can just run past. No, no big deal, right? No problem, okay? So what's the problem? Gangsta number two is the problem, right? This guy is a fucking asshole. He wants to grab you. He wants to squeeze you. We're not, we're, 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 we ain't gonna let him squeeze you, okay? So you can deal with him in a few different ways. I've seen people who, you know, they run past gangsta number one and they stop. And then they shoot gangster number two to like make him do an attack or some shit, you know, like he does, he slams the ground or he spawns some little gangster, gangster boys or whatever. And you can run past him then. I can't get it to work. Fuck that shit, okay? Technique number two. You can run right past him, either on the left or the right. Sometimes it works and it's great. But it works only like 10 or 15% of the time for me anyway. So fuck that shit, right? Okay, technique number three. I just hit the mic, I'm sorry. Technique number three. This is what we're gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I recommend you to do. Or do do ba do, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna run up to gangster number two. That rhymes. And then you're gonna bait an attack. He's gonna try to grab you. And you're gonna turn around, run the fuck away, and then run right past him while he's, you know, like confused and shit, okay? That's the plan. So, to recap, you're here. You shoot gangster number one, run past him on the left. You duke an attack from gangster number two, run past him either on the left or the right. Usually the right works for me. Run right past gangster number three, hug the left, shoot Zombo Mans, stun him, run past. Get to safety. Beautiful, isn't it? I got a bit unlucky with the Zombo here, he just didn't want to get stunned, so I ended up wasting a nade on him, but that doesn't usually happen. Maybe I should have kneecapped him with the revolver instead. Continue on, grabbing a few herbs and the queen plug on the way. Kill this zombie on the floor.
Now you can kill this other zombie hanging over the railing as well. He can actually be a bit of a nuisance. But this time, I decided to let him live and slip past him after getting the king plug atop the stairs. Then insert the king plug to get the spark shot and goof around trying to get back past this guy. Shuffle the queen and king plugs around until you make it out of here with both pieces in your inventory. Now we just need to get back past the gangsters. The zombie we stunned to get past on the way in might still be alive, so be wary when you open the door. Oh, <laughs> you guys thought I was done with the maps, huh? Well, no. This is gangster map number two. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Okay? You're here. Safety. Very nice. You took care of Zombomance. Now all that's in your way is some gangsters. Okay, you got a gangster zone right here. There could be a gangster somewhere in this zone. Just, you know, stand here, bait him over. When he does his little animation, he's like whoop 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 whoop. Goes down into the water, you know? You just, you just run past him. Fuck that guy, right? Okay, usually there's a gangster somewhere over here. You don't have to care about that guy, okay? He's gonna come after you, but you're too fast for him, okay? Fuck this gangster. Then you got the please no gangster zone, okay? This guy, if he exists, is super annoying because he's going to block the whole freaking path, okay? So what you can do is, number one, bait an attack like we did on the way in. Run past him. If you can get past him, he's fat, okay? He takes up a lot of space, okay? He might grab you, okay? Sometimes there's no gangster. Most of the time, there's no gangster here and you can just run straight past. It's very nice. Okay, let's see it in action, okay? When you drop down here, a gangster is scripted to come at you. Simply use the platform to bypass it. And there we go. Time for the G2 Birkin fight. Bring with you the SMG and ammo, as well as the grenade launcher and ammo. We also need the chess pieces to continue. Grab the bishop piece and replace it with the queen. Then insert the bishop piece next to the queen. Grab the knight and replace it with the king. And on the opposite wall, insert the knight and the rook like so. You'll find herbs for a full blend on the way to the boss.
Hit switch 2, 3, and 4 here, and run back to the door to activate the Birkin. And then, go stand next to these barrels where he can't hit you. Eventually, Birkin will come through the door. Line up a flame round to bid him a warm welcome. Then run past him. The strategy I'm using here is simply to alternate between hitting him with a flame round and then dumping a load of SMG rounds into his chorizo arm until I've done enough damage to take him out with a single hit from the container. The key here is to stay relatively close to Birkin to manipulate his attack pattern. If you run too far away from him, he will run at you and try to grab you. But if you stay close, you can make him swing at the air indefinitely. When you see his chorizo arm turn kind of reddish, that's when you know he's taken enough damage to go down with a single hit from the container. At this point, I bait him into swinging at the air before dropping down, priming the container, and grabbing this knife and flashbang. Then, we need to dodge him while the container is priming. I did a rather poor job of it, as you can tell. When the container is ready, we need to stun him in place to be hit by it. You could use a flashbang to do this, but I prefer to shoot him instead. Alright, time to get Sherry and go to nest. Check everything. There's no turning back. This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. I'm getting you treatment. Just hold on, Sherry. It's okay. Head into the security room and put Sherry down. 
pick up these flame rounds and go to the stash and leave everything but your revolver and ammo. Head back and get the wristband. Head to the cafeteria and immediately dart right to grab this grenade. Then take the needle shot on this table and the revolver ammo right here. Run through to the ladder before any of the zombos can get to you. Drop down the open latch and walk in this room. There is a large gunpowder and a knife here you should take. And then this dude on the other side of the door. We walk in this room to keep him unaware of our presence, as he might get right up to the door otherwise. Run into the nap room and get the upgrade for the spark shot and the level 2 upgrade for the wristband. As you exit, stay right to avoid opening the cafeteria door. Otherwise, the zombies inside will crowd the hallway, and we will be back here shortly. Dr. Lee, your presence is urgently requested by Chief Cartwright in the east area. Run to the main shaft and activate the bridge with your wristband. Then grab the signal modulator here and run back towards the cafeteria. Stay left to once again avoid opening the cafeteria door. Usually a zombo spawns in this connecting room that you have to deal with. Use the signal modulator to uh, you know, uh, modulate signals and get the hit pouch in here. Alright, onwards to the east area. If you haven't already, might as well apply the upgrades we've found throughout the game to the spark shot and the SLS revolver. I'm bringing the SMG and ammo, the wristband and signal modulator, as well as a used knife and a couple of flashbangs. Run through here, grabbing the white gunpowder on your left before going straight past this ivy. Don't worry, he's too slow for you. Take the flashbang and go enter these codes at the terminal. If you imagine the keypad having the numbers 1 through 9 and a 0 at the bottom, the codes are as follows. 5831 and 2048.
Get the dispersal cartridge and head to the drug testing lab, grabbing this red herb on the way. There's a large gunpowder and a grenade for us here. To get the solution for our dispersal cartridge, simply enter blue, red, and green three times at this machine. Now make your way back out. Stun the ivy by shooting one of those orange bulbs on its body and run past down this ladder. Use the grenade we just picked up on these sleeping zombos here. The one in the back always seems to survive, so put him down, grab the flame rounds, modulate some earth signals, and take the green herb on the bench. Now just run straight past these liquors into the low temp testing lab. Get the solution cooled down and make your way back out. Complete. Walk back the way you came. The liquors are either both going to sit in the middle of the room, like they are here, or one of them will be on the wall next to the server room. Either way, just walk past them to the server room. Stash some items and loot the server room. Now, I only brought one bad knife here, but you can bring as many as you like. Now I only brought one bad knife here, but you can bring any you have, really. They can save your life in the upcoming section. Walk back out the server room and back the way we came. We're gonna ascend the ladder and make our way past the ivies now roaming about. The bad knives will give you get out of jail free card if you get grabbed by an ivy. Insert the dispersal cartridge and run back into the garden. Dispensing so, so much for the weed infestation. Warning. You have dispersed a dangerous. Get the blue herb if you can be bothered, as well as the wristband upgrade, and make your way back, stunning ivies with the SMG to get past them. As soon as you enter the greenhouse control room, immediately bolt to the left, as there is now a surprise ivy here who can quickly end your life. As you make your way back out of the east wing, there will be an additional two ivies you need to get past. Use bad knives or flashbangs if they grab you. On to the west wing and the upcoming G3 Birkin boss fight now.
Take the grenade next to this body and modulate some more signals. Head towards the antiviral agent. Now, for the G3 fight, we're going to need the upgraded SLS revolver, which can now fire magnum ammo. Loot the surrounding area, save the game, and bring the following loadout if you're playing at 120 frames per second or more. All the combat knives you have left, the magnum and all the magnum ammo you have, and in case you need it, the grenade launcher and some ammo of your choice. Optionally, bring a healing item as well. We also need the wristband for a while yet. More on the 60 and 30 frames per second versions of this fight in a bit. Make sure to put the magnum rounds in the SLS. Now the strategy here is to use the magnum, or the SLS, to pop Birkin's churito eyes. You only get 12 bullets, so make them count to the best of your ability. Whenever he goes down, get up to his back and knife the shit out of him. If you stand in this specific spot, you can hit his back and both of his arms at the same time. Rinse and repeat. There are two more magnum rounds in the arena itself if your aim isn't quite true enough. The easiest way to hit the eye on his back is to wait for him to go pick up one of those flammable canisters to throw at you, or when he leaps at you, you can run around his back, dodging the attack, and get an easy shot at If needed, switch to the grenade launcher to finish him off. Now, for the 30 and 60 frames per second strategies. Combine your large gunpowders and white gunpowders to make acid rounds, and bring a loadout that looks a bit like this. This is probably way more firepower than you need, but there's no reason not to bring everything you got. Make sure to put the magnum rounds in the SLS, and load an acid round into the grenade launcher. The strategy starts out much the same way as the 120 frames per second strategy, but we won't be able to beat him with just the magnum and the knives.
Once you see him release his gaseous death cloud here, it means he's entered his final form. At this point, use the grenade launcher, alternating between acid rounds to stun him and flame rounds to do the brunt of the damage. You can almost stun lock him this way. Go for the eyes on his chest. And there it is. Easy peasy. In this arena, there are three needle shot rounds and a single grenade you could grab. I didn't end up needing them, but they're nice to have for the upcoming G4 Birkin fight or the final G5 Birkin fight. Make your way back to Sherry, getting the final upgrade for the wristband in the process. Sherry, can you walk faster? I don't want to rush you, but we have to go. Take the elevator down and have a breather. Time for the quick draw army to make its last appearance. It's been a good lad, in it. Run past all of these ivies. They're too slow for you, and Sherry has impenetrable plot armor. Descend the ladder and try the door. Of course. The stupid thing's locked. Hold on. Sure, what are you? I think I can open it from the other side. Take out these ivies however you please. I'll burn them with some flame rounds.
run through the chaos and pepper this flamey dude with all your bullets for extra style points. For the G4 Birkin boss fight, we're going to use the now upgraded spark shot and the SMG. Make sure to bring all the ammo you have. You need two extra spaces for the joint plug from inside the train, so don't fill your inventory, but feel free to pop a red-blue herb mix to reduce any damage you take during the boss fight. Plug in the joint plug and pull the handle. Don't forget the minigun on the way out. We're gonna need that later. So Birkin starts out being chilling atop the train. I'm gonna dump some SMG mags into him until he jumps down into the arena. Go for the eyes in his chest. Try to stay near the ends of the train so that when he charges at you, you can use the train to dodge his attack. Use the spark shot at your leisure for massive damage. Whenever he climbs the wall, he'll jump at you either directly or after he jumps onto the train. Whenever he does, just keep moving and he won't hit you. Make sure to continually walk backwards away from him as you charge the spark shots. If he gets too close, just run to the other end of the train and repeat. I switch to the SMG after depleting my needle shot ammo. You could use the minigun here as well, but make sure to keep roughly 200 rounds in reserve for the final fight. Eventually, he'll enter his slumbering mess state. Finish him off, preferably at a comfortable distance.
Now for the final fight. Make sure to bring the minigun. I'm gonna use whatever I have left at my disposal to start with and then switch to the minigun. And now, I literally hold both mouse buttons until I win. Go for the eye when he exposes it. And there it is. S plus on hardcore difficulty for Claire's B scenario in 1 hour, 20 minutes and 7 seconds. Plenty of time to spare. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a long time to make it, but I really enjoyed coming up with this route. If you would like more content like this, please tell me in the comments below. And with that, I wish you all a lovely day. Jesus. Jesus. Get to safety. <laughs> 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 <laughs>